I'm going to pray real quick. Lord, we love you. Thank you for tonight. Thank you for our friends and our family who are here. Um, God, as I hear of terrorist attacks and um, uh, persecution all over the world, um, let us not take for granted that um, we are here together safely in a room to talk about the love that you give us, a true love that we desire in our lives. And I invite you into this room. I invite you into my mind and these words. And I pray that it's less of me and more of you and that the gospel is super loud. It's in Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. Amen. Okay, cool. So love is in the air. Love is on the TV. Love is on every top 40 hit song that you've ever heard, right? Like you could just rattle off love songs. So we're thinking about it. We desire it. We want it. I think we need to shift our longing desire for true love for what it really is. And I believe that's a desire for God. Now let me explain. I, think, I believe a true love exists. This is, this is a hypothesis I have, okay? Has anyone ever been frustrated with love? Like just frustrated? That's fine. It's okay to admit it. So you have these friends, you're like, I can't believe they said that. I can't believe they did that. Or, or maybe it's like, I can't believe mom or dad said no Or it's like, I can't believe my friend or boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever posted that selfie we took where they look like a Kardashian and I look like Fred Flintstone. And you're you're like, how could you? You betrayed me. The worst, actually, is when you just try to make the most ugly face humanly possible and then you snap it to your buddy or your girl. girl? I don't know. What's what's the buddy term for girl? Lady? Lady? and then you get this notification. After you snap that, you get this notification. Becky just took a snap or a, a screenshot. And you go, what? Like, you betrayed me. Like, why, why would you do that? You know? so, so we've been, my point here is we get frustrated with love. We get frustrated with things. TJ, can I get a little house light? I, like, I would like to see their faces a little bit. There you are. Aw. Oh, look at you. Okay, so we get frustrated with love, right? We get, we, we're looking for love in our friends, in our family, in our social media game, right? We're looking for love, and we have these expectations of what love should be, okay? Which I think is proof for the existence of true love. Hear me out. How is it, now, now thinking caps, here we go. How is it that we are even aware that we aren't being loved enough, Like, how do we get frustrated with human love not being enough if human love was all that ever existed? We would just compare it to the best we've ever been loved, right? And yet, even the best we've ever been loved doesn't satisfy. It doesn't completely satisfy. So we're longing for more in life. We're longing for more love. And my point here is, I think we long and desire for a true love, whether we know it or not. I think we spend our whole lives desiring a true love, a true love. And because... The love we experience here on earth is human at best, right? It's broken, it's imperfect, it's, it's frustrating, and we think it's her fault, or it's his fault, or it's their fault, and we're, we're constantly checking how much we're being loved, and if we're not loved enough, or if we don't feel as good as we think we ought to, right? But in reality, how are we holding anybody to any higher expectation if the best is human love? How are we getting there? Where's that even coming from? How are we saying, hey, you should be this good at loving me, not this good. You should be this good. Where's that expectation coming from? It's like, it's like realizing something is bad, and you can only do so by comparing it to something good, right? So you look at something bad. All, all I have to do is slap your mom, and you know that something is wrong in the world, right? You know that evil exists. I would never do that. But that's an example of how you would go, that is bad. Not slapping someone's mother is good. You compare it to the two, right? You compare it to the two so you know where that truth comes from. We get frustrated with human love because we have this innate sense of true love. I think our hearts can tell that we aren't being loved up to our full potential. Let's say our our full love level isn't being reached, right? Or whatever love has to offer. So I wanted to represent this visually so in these cups is water. Let's, let's, uh, let's call this a bucket. And this bucket represents your love level. This is ultimate love right here, okay? So, so let's say you have a father. He loves you. So he's going to pour some love 
into this situation. So you're like, okay, so um, I have this much love. I'm st- I still need more. I still want more, right? Okay, so let's say your social media. Your social media game is on point. You got like 23 likes on that last Instagram post because you had the right, the right hashtag formula, right? So you had like, uh, you had hashtag live folk on there and it just blew up. Okay, so, and, and so Cality Barbie even liked it. Okay, so, um, so we have social media game. We got some love from there. Um, we have some love from uh, uh, a sibling. Do we have any oldest children in here? Oldest child in the family? Let's imagine this is the youngest child in the family. Oh, okay. So that's all, <laughs> that's all you get from that. Okay, and so you get some love from your mom, right? Okay so, I'll, okay, so I have this much love in my life from this. Okay, best friends forever. Who has a best friend forever? Yeah, BFFs for life, right? Okay, so I got, I got this much love now. Okay, so I have my activities. I feel loved because I'm in show choir, because I'm on the band, the marching band. I'm on the team, right? Okay, so we get some love here. Okay, does anybody notice anything? It's not full. It's not full. So, okay, think of it this way. We're desiring a true love, right? We're thirsty for this much, and all we're getting is this much. Do you feel that? Do you feel that? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Do you feel that in your life? You're thirsty. You're thirsty for more love. So we're longing for the rest of this love, right? We want to fill that bucket. We want to fill that bucket. We might try riding the wave of pretending or or going along with our culture that's saying, hey, love, love is all you need. Love is all you need. Obviously, it's not doing enough. I'm not getting what I need from this, right? And it's like we go through life and they're saying, uh, you need to get this from everyone. You need to have a boyfriend or a girlfriend to matter to get that love, right? It's just like this cultural thing where we're saying, like, why does this even happen? Like, what are we talking about? And the world is simply encouraging this. Have you ever heard the phrase, trust your heart? Have you heard that? Trust your heart. Let fate decide. See, I got all the show choir kids. I knew it. We're lucky they're not like step touching and like jumping up. And I can make that joke because I was in show choir. So it's cool. It's cool. I can make that joke. But even at the Super Bowl, even at the Super Bowl, right? The backsplash. Who watched the Super Bowl halftime show? Yeah, the backsplash. By the way, Broncos. <laughs> um, they just, they won by like this. Much. Okay, so the backsplash of the halftime game, what did it say? Did anybody see it? Believe in love. Believe in love. And I saw that and I go, what a frustrating thing to put my my faith in. What a frustrating thing to believe in, right? Unless there's true love, unless there's true love involved, then I would give my attention to that. Like a time-tested, good, true love. I would pay attention to that. So I think we have this need for true love, this seemingly unsatisfiable desire for things in this world. We We have desires for people, places, things, right? I think, honestly, we just wander the earth trying to find this true love, trying to find the way to fill this bucket, right? It's arguable that love is one of the strongest forces in the universe. You might say, you might say our entire existence is, is powered by, fueled by, controlled by this pursuit of true love, this, this longing for true love. Think about the love that you have and the power of the love you have for your mom, for your dad, for your car, for your team, for your choir, for your band, right? For your money, for your iPhone, people. How many of you would ball if you lost that thing, right? I would, I would. My pants would fit better because this thing's as big as my chest, but I could, I could argue that a portion of all the decisions we make in our life are based off of love, right? Like, have you ever heard this? I feel it in my heart. I feel it in my heart. I want it so, 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 so bad. I want it so bad. No, I really like him. I really do. No, I really like her. I really do. It doesn't matter how they treat me or, or, or how terrible I feel or how alone I am when I'm with them. Even when I'm with them, I feel alone. We get frustrated and we, and we have these things that we want so bad, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, an iPhone, a car, whatever it is, and then we get it and that thing gets old and then we're on to the next lust and the next love, right? Right? Girls think, like, they, they think they can find true love by abusing their bodies, by, by comparing themselves to that girl that has the 4,000 likes and comparing their body to that. They're abandoning senses of modesty just to get attention, just to get people to look, right? Posting or snapping photos that should only be seen by someone called a husband. 
And by the way, this is for everyone. Everything you do now with your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your innocence, everything you are doing now, think about your future spouse. Think about them. Because no matter what you are doing now, whether you like it or not, it will affect them. Keep that in mind. Ladies lowering themselves down to this nothing point where they would do anything to be told from an a abusive tool of a guy, I love you, I love you, baby, I love you, trust me, I love you, right? That isn't true love. That isn't true love. You, and, and men, men, thinking they can just find this love that they don't get by clicking on the internet. Like one quick nude photo, that's it. I'll, I'll download the app for now that shouldn't be on my phone, easy, I'll just delete it. Not a big deal. That is until it turns out to be a full out porn addiction and then it turns out you can't feel anything anymore in the world because that's all you know and it's grown you to be numb. That's not true love either, is it? And we know it, we can feel it. We can feel it in our hearts that it's not enough. It's not filling our bucket, right? Okay, so, so there's these myths about true love. We're going to break this down, and then I'm going to wrap this up. We're going to land this plane, and then we're going to go home, right? Or we're going to small groups and go home. Myths about love. So there's hundreds of myths about love. You see it on tabloids, the, the magazines, when you're checking out at High V. You see these things, right? Okay, I, I believe that one of the myths about love is that we try to find it in happiness or our feelings, or we trade true love for happiness or feelings, right? Okay, so... So we've covered this. You, you, you've heard this phrase before, follow your heart. Follow your heart. It feels so right. I have such strong feelings about this thing that it must be true. And the logic follows. And by the way, whatever is true to me doesn't have to be true to you. That's okay. Like, we'll just kind of hang out, you know, and kind of like, that's the logic, right? I'm not here to judge, so I'm going to talk about the plank in my own eye. My heart's stupid, people. My feelings are stupid, like stupid. I couldn't trust them any farther than I could throw them. My heart's fickle. It's manipulative. And it's moody. Let's be honest. I'm a moody man. And, and, and like if I were about to eat my birthday cake and you smash my face, out, I'd instantly hate you. Instantly. Just hate. But then after that, after I, you know, prayed about it and wiped the tears from my face and I kind of got centered and you handed me the keys to a new Prius. Oh man, baby. A man can dream. Come on. Oh. <sighs> I want one so bad. Just if you ever come across a free Prius, you know who to go. Okay. So I'm a man in touch with his emotions, right? I, I can, I, I'm an otter. High highs, low lows. I can't trust my feelings. I can't trust my feelings. I just can't. Right? If I tr listen to this. If I trusted my feelings, I would have continued on the path that I was on five or six years ago, and I'd be in a gutter somewhere wondering why I'm alive. That's where I would be if I followed my feelings and trusted my feelings. That's where I'd be, honestly. I can't trust my feelings. I heard it said once um, that you can't trust your feelings because feelings come from bad burritos, right? <laughs> like, that's where feelings come from, <laughs> is bad burritos. You can't trust them. Yet we're tormented in this life. We have this feeling that, 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 that this thing is going to make me happy, that it's going to solve this issue, Right? But honestly, I, th I think we're at a constant war with our feelings. We can't trust them. We got to always be checking them and testing them. We're sinful. We're broken. We're confused. Jeremiah 17, 9, the heart is deceitful above all things. Above all things, the heart is deceitful and desperately sick. Who can understand it? In Matthew 15, 19, Jesus says, For out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, and slander. It's not stacking up too well. It's not really for us at that point, right? I think some of us look for love in status or appearance, right? In where we're at in society, to be loved, to feel love, we'll trade that for true love. We'll say, okay, I'll do this thing if it makes me feel loved. Once again, I'll talk about the plank in my own eye, okay? So, so here I am growing up. I, I would do anything for people to like me. I would do anything, anything it took. I would change my name if it made people like me more. I kid you not. Okay, so it was eighth grade year, and I was told I needed glasses. Getting glasses in middle school is like a nightmare. Are you kidding me? For someone, someone in the back, oh, yeah. <laughs> 
they've been there, apparently. So here I am, eighth grade. I'm like, okay, so I don't want to be embarrassed for getting glasses. So I'm going to get the smallest frames I possibly can, um, the smallest lenses, everything. So I'm going to get, it's basically like wearing contacts, right? Nobody will even notice. Little did I know, putting something really small on a big head um, <laughs> makes things look a little disproportional, okay? So it was terrible. And I looked bad, like just straight bad. It wasn't like, okay, it was bad. So like my freshman year, I was blind the entire time. I would, I would put my glasses in my pocket until like essential moments, right? It'd be like assemblies or, or getting notes off the border or driving, you know? I was like, okay, I'll use my glasses now. But anyways, seriously, I would do anything for people to like me, anything to be cool. And maybe that's you. Maybe, maybe, that's, <laughs> maybe you're the kid that wants to be liked so bad you're willing to make fun of that one kid that nobody likes until he cries, or worse, until he breaks. Maybe you're that kid that wants to be liked so bad that you became that person, the very person you said you'd never be. I'd never be that person, and here you are. For status, for appearance, we desire, I would desire to be in that circle. Have you ever been on the outside circle wanting to get in? That's all of us, right? We desire this thing. And I felt all I ever needed was status to feel loved, an appearance to feel loved. And maybe you're stuck in a world where if you don't have status or appearance, you feel like you're going to lose those friends, and you believe the lie that those are the only friends you'll ever have. It's a lie. That's a lie, Stephen. <laughs> but you have this desire, this true desire for true love, and you know those aren't the friends you need. Maybe, maybe you're stuck in a world where if you're this certain person of status or appearance, you have to act untouchable and unbreakable, right? And this whole school wishes they could be like me. You made it. But on the inside, you know you aren't as perfect as they see you to be. And the whole thing, honestly, is just a big act. You're lying, right? Maybe you're stuck in a world where you have to be perfect in every way and you have to point out everyone else's wrongs and everyone else's sin because you're the churchy one and you're trying to get your family and your friends to meet God and you don't know how to do it. But you know you're mightily insufficient. And in your heart, I believe you, you really want to love them, but you don't know how. Escaping this status and this appearance is one of the most terrifying and humiliating things you will ever do. But maybe that's the point, right? Some of us look for love and security or our identity, or we trade security or our identity for love, right? So we, we're stuck in this world of pretend. We're stuck in this place where our identity is built up on this big act, most times a big lie. And we long for love and security of, or identity of the way we look in school, of the position we have on the team. Of the, of, of the solo in the choir or the lead in the musical, right? Or our social media success, whatever it is in your heart, we, we put our entire identities into this thing. And then we lose ourselves. We lose our identity. And we wake up going, who am I? Like, seriously. And I think I found a way out. I think I found the way out. And it, at least it worked for me. At least it worked for me. And it was one of the most painful and humiliating things I've ever done and still do. Jesus said it. Jesus said, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Here it is. Greater love has no one than this. Someone laid down his life for his friends. Feels like your pride just got stabbed in the chest, right? Humble yourselves. Live honestly. Quit pretending. Quit hiding stuff. Quit lying. Serve people. Serve your family and your friends. This changed my life. I humbled myself down. And I found myself shivering and shaking like a little child that hadn't been fed. There I was. I was thirsty for that. I needed to experience true love. And so I humbled myself. And I ask God to humble me. And when you ask God to humble you, he shows up, buddy, every time. And it's a struggle. It's still a struggle. 
about a month into marriage, I had this like mid midlife crisis where I turned to Jane and I go, Jane, you like me, right? Like, do you, do you think, you, are you my friend? You think I'm funny, right? Because you at least laugh at my jokes so, so that I think I'm funny. It's amazing what that woman puts up with. Amazing. But seriously, if I'm being honest, we put ourselves in these identities and we try to find love in these identities. And then when those friends are gone, you go, who am I? Who have I been this whole time? I've just been looking for love and I haven't found it. I think we find it in love, but it's a different kind of love. John 1, 9 through 12 says, the true light which gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. They were looking in all the wrong places for love. They were looking in all the wrong places. He came to his own town and his own people did not receive him. They were looking over top of him. Love must be out there somewhere. I gotta go find it. Love was standing right next to him. But to all who did receive him, who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. He gave us weary travelers, us seekers of true love that want to fill our buckets and we do anything to get there. He gave us happiness and he gave us status and he gave us security as children of God. Love isn't God. Quit chasing love or quit trading it for the desire that is actually God. God is love. That's the thing you're longing for that nothing else can fill. I think what we've done is we've mistakenly traded our desire for God for our desire for love. And I think the whole statement, God is love, got turned around somehow. I think the feeling of frustration is because we're trying to get our desires out of God, out of humans, out of things of this world that are broken and empty. And we're going, it's not there either out of the world's definition of love, or, the, or even worse, we've taken God out of the picture completely. And we wonder why we're frustrated and we want to punch a wall because we can't feel anything. It's nat Listen, it's natural to love and be loved. Love is a good thing. It's a good thing. Love is good. But we have to understand that true love only comes from God. That bucket only gets filled by, by knowing God. We, like, we, we will be loved by humans and family and husbands and wives, and we, we, we will experience love in these ways, right? But we have to remember it's human love. It's human love. And we can try to desire more, and we desire true love. That's what we desire, and we try to squeeze it out of people. We're over here going, Mom, love me more. Like, come on, best friend, give me more. I need this. I'm thirsty. And we're not getting anything. But that desire for a true love will be satisfied when you experience God. Our desire for true love is really a desire for God because just like it said in 1 John 4, anyone who does not know God does not know love. But, however, those who do know God know love because God is love. You will find a satisfaction that you will not believe if you can take that truth and bury it right here. I'm trying to do this every day. So how do I fill the bucket, right? If you take this bucket to the ocean, are you going to have a hard time filling it? You're barely going to have to do anything. In fact, you can stand there and do nothing, and the waves are going to hit you. God's love is an ocean. Let's make the shift. Let's understand the frustration in our desires for love is because our desire is actually for God. It has been the whole time. And you might say, well, that's pretty neat, Parker. That's pretty cool. But how do I know God? God is this abstract, all-knowing, all-present being, right? Kind of hard to put your thumb on, don't you think? You have a point. You have a point. Wouldn't it be more frustrating trying to find God than being involved in the love that I have right now? Because at least I could fake it. Good point. But what if God knew you would ask that question? And he already had an answer. The realization of all of this is 1 John 4, 9 through 10. In this love, God was made manifest among us. God sent his only son into the world so that we, we might live through him. This is the kind of love we're talking about. Not that once upon a time we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to clear away our sins and the damage they've done to our relationship with God. Jesus is the realization of true love. True love touched. True love spoke. It promised. True love walked beside us humans. True love is a person that you can know and see. 
and who saves. Believe me, I know. Jesus promises his love, and there's no better way, no better way to wrap this up than this scripture that I'm about to read. These are the words of Jesus Christ translated in the message version, and I want you to just take a deep breath. Roll roll your shoulders and just close your eyes. I'm going to read this to you. I want you to hear this. I have loved you the way my Father has loved me. Make yourselves at home in my love. If you keep my commands, you'll remain intimately at home in my love. That's what I've done. Kept my Father's commands and made myself at home in his love. I've told you these things for a purpose, that my joy might be your joy and your joy wholly mature. This is my command. Love one another the way I loved you. This is the very best way to love. Put your life on the line for your friends. You are my friends when you do the things I command you. I'm no longer calling you servants because servants don't understand what their master is thinking or planning. No, I've named you friends because I've let you in on everything I've heard from the Father. You didn't choose me, remember? I chose you put you in the world to bear fruit, fruit that won't spoil, a true love. As fruit bearers, whatever you ask the Father in the relation to me, he gives you. But remember the root command, love one another. That was John 15, 9 through 17. True love exists in Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, and he has invited us to make ourselves at home. Let's make ourselves at home. Amen.